idea for a short story. This is the City Theatre of Stockholm. And uh, we have a festival here, but this is not always here. And this is the stage, stage entrance. Andy, stage with stage... Stage hands. Stage hands. <laughs> I've always had a clear thought of what I want in life and what I want to do. I wanted to be an actress or a ballet dancer or a singer. <laughs> I wanted to do it all. I went to the Royal Ballet School here in Sweden and after a few years I got this role in a theatre performance, uh, a musical. So I had to choose between the ballet school and the theatre. I decided to choose the acting in front of the dance. And from that moment it was like a big world opening to me. Be quiet. Here are all the other actors. It's a big theatre, as you can see. In this corridor, we have different rooms for all the actors. And here's where I live. I love other plays. There are different ways to understand and to be able to become this character that I'm playing in. For example, it's tougher when, when you play a role that is not so close to yourself. For example, I was playing a mom which was giving birth to another, to her second child and I don't have any children. So how would I do this scene without having the, uh, the knowledge of how, how it feels like to give birth to a child? I mean, I've seen it in movies. <laughs> you scream. <laughs> but I didn't know what it felt like, so how would I act it then? I actually did some research by going to a hospital. Uh, I was allowed to be with a woman and her husband when she was giving birth to her child. So I could really be there and understand what she really went through and I could actually use that experience to playing this character. I love to challenge myself with playing different characters. I've done everything from comedy and sitcom. And I've played like really dramatic characters. Then I've played this bimbo girl with big blonde hair and it was a fantastic role. I had so much fun. So um, yeah, sometimes you get to have fun in my job. It's like doing research. I'm doing the same kind of research I think that a psychologist would do. So I think it's the same kind of interest in people. In the end of my theatre education, I did a feature film called Wings of Glass. This film gave me kind of a breakthrough uh, in Sweden. Uh, it got a lot of attention and um, won a lot of uh, awards. And uh, we travelled with it around the world to different film festivals. I played an 18-year-old Muslim girl uh, called Nasli. She grew up here in Sweden. Her father is... Uh, uh, Persian and the film is about how the father wants the two daughters to marry someone in, within the family and the Mus Muslim men but how she falls in love with the Swedish man. I've had many girls coming up to me after this film and telling me that you, you've played my life and this is this is the way I grew up and uh, that it really affected them and helped them a lot. That was a, a very important in my career, I think. You get all these tools, how to make choices that are not always Sarah's choices, but choices that are the character's choices. Sometimes I use music, I try to find music that will help me to get in the right mood. Sometimes I have a little stone or something that someone just gave me and that inspires me for this role and that I can, you know, get inspiration from. And sometimes I make a small prayer. Here's one little lucky angel that a friend Josephine, another um, actress, gave me. We can sneak out here. So this is where I work. For me, it has always been about the passion for, for the acting. And, I mean, to be honest, of course, there's a piece of me that loves being on stage and just the... the the ego feeling of it. So this is of course fun, but being famous, it's quite empty. It's not of importance if you're not doing something that you're actually passionate about. So this hunt for fame, which is 
uh, very big in, in the society today. It's a very empty part of life and it's not interesting for me as a person. It doesn't make me happy. It makes me happy that people come and watch my play and, or my film and that they appreciate it and maybe get inspired or um, that, that makes me happy. This is actually backstage. Hey. And usually this is all the technique stuff. And now, now I'm gonna show you the, the makeup place where we do makeup. So this is one of my makeup artists. She makes me beautiful every night or ugly, depending on the character. Yes, I, I do feel lucky, I really do. I'm not sure that I've always been the most talented person, but I've worked the most and I've, I've been very stubborn to that this is what I want to do. It doesn't matter how much you've done before or how good you've been before, it's always today that counts. It's a lot about timing to be at the right place at the right time, to be exactly the person that the director is looking for. Thank you, Inshallah. Well, I live in Sweden and I'm not the typical Swedish girl. <laughs> My parents are Polish Jews and they came here in 68. So I'm, I'm born and raised in Sweden. So on the paper I'm Swedish. But of course I've never felt uh, that I am totally Swedish. I've always felt, I mean, a strong connection to my Jewish identity. And I've always felt that I've been different from all of my Swedish friends, of course. I have things in common with this Muslim girl and her identity crisis and problems being a Swedish Muslim. So uh, I can relate to that, of course, in those kind of roles. And we have a big uh, generation of young people in Sweden which gr grows up with these um, problems that they have parents with one tradition and they want to be Swedish and they want to live in the Swedish traditions. So. I think every parent wants the best for their child and even though my parents hoped for me to you know, grow up one day and find a real job as they call it, uh, today they are, um, I think they're proud of me. <laughs>